After completing this lesson, you'll be able to animate the motion of an assembly, the visibility of its components, and the view position of the components. You'll also be able to generate a rendered animation. In addition to generating still images of a design, you can also capture the mechanisms of the design in motion. In the Inventor Studio environment, you have access to an animation timeline. On this animation timeline, you can specify the amount of time that you would like to animate the assembly and the actions that you would like to animate. We'll begin by setting the duration or the length of the animation to 5 seconds. Then we'll want to start making changes. First, let's animate the visibility of components over time. We'll select the Fade tool, then in the browser, select most of the components that make up everything but the gears and the primary sprocket. We'll select all of the components up to the motor. Then we'll also select the two plugs and the bolted connection between them. Finally, we'll select the stand. We'll specify the amount of time we want the view transition to happen. We'll begin the view transition at 0.3 seconds and finish it at 1. As far as what we'll be animating, we'll take the visibility of the components from 100% down to 0. When we click OK, we'll be positioned at one second and we'll see all of the components are invisible. If we expand the timeline, we can see that a series of actions have been created for each component. Returning the timeline to zero and then clicking play, we can see the components fade out over that time. Let's return the timeline back to zero. Then let's get a different view of the assembly. Want to focus in on the gearbox area. And in the browser, we'll go up to camera, right click, and select create camera from view. Next, let's animate the camera. There are many options that you have for animating a camera. You can define a sketch for the camera to follow. For this exercise, I'll use a simple turntable about the Z axis. Make sure that it's rotating the correct direction. And we'll say that what we want to do is 0.45 revolutions. We'll start at zero and complete the revolution at four seconds. Clicking OK, we can rewind and test the animation again. What will happen this first time is we will see the camera move as the components fade. Let's rewind again. This time, let's switch the view from current view to camera one. Now when we play it, we'll see the motion of the camera as we see the components fade out. Let's rewind one more time, and let's create an animation of positional representations. In the assembly, there's a master positional representation, but there's a second positional representation called rotated gears that rotates the gear set 540 degrees with the mating gears updating their position. We'll specify the rotation of the gears beginning at 0.5 seconds and stopping at 4.8 seconds. We can go to the acceleration tab and specify an acceleration. For 20% of the animation, it will accelerate. For 60%, it will run at a steady speed, and then it will decelerate for the last 20%. We'll click OK to create the animation. Now, 
Let's rewind and test again. We can see that the gears rotate, the camera repositions, and the components fade out. Now, we can use the render animation tool using many of the same options we had for render image. We can select a resolution. We'll get a preview of what the frame will look like. We can choose what the output will be, setting the appropriate time. If we want this to be a video format or a series of images, and specify the output area, the frame rate, and how we want to render it. We can set a total rendering time, set a number of iterations to render. Let's set this to 15, and then set the quality level. Similar to ray tracing or render image, we can use high, draft, or low. Let's just use low for this example. And let's start the render. We'll start the render, selecting where we want the file to go, and choose the file type to be WMV or AVI. We'll start the AVI by clicking Save. We'll set the codec, click OK, and it will begin to render the individual frames for this animation. When the rendering is completed, you can save the file. Note that even with the low frame rate of 15 frames per second and the low quality rendering, it can still take significant time to generate the animation. Even with the modest quality output, you can see what the potential is. As a demonstration of what's possible, with a little more time and a higher quality rendering, let's take a look at this example, done at 20 frames per second with a high quality rendering. Being able to share your designs with the world in a clear and concise manner in a relatively simple way is an incredibly powerful capability to add to your skill set with Inventor.